Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Elias Anacondia. Thank you so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. Thank you, Evangelist. It's a, Daniel, it's a blessing to be here. Now, you come from a very rich heritage of evangelism. Your father is Carlos Anacondia, who is known all over Central and South America for doing crusades. Uh, for many years, yes. he has been telling people about Jesus. What was it like to grow up with a, a father who had a passion for reaching people for Jesus? Well, for me, it was a blessing as a family. Uh, have, uh, we are a big family. We have uh, uh, eight, eight siblings, we are. So it's, it's been a blessing to see my, my, my parents, mom and dad, serving the Lord. So what I can say, like for me, they set an example of being a team while my father was preaching the crusades, my mother was taking care at home. So, and, and you know the balance that I, that I saw at home for me was such beautiful, beautiful to, to be part of, of a move of God that we have uh, lived as a family. And what are some of the greatest lessons that you've learned from your father? You know, a lot of people can see a minister from the outside, yeah. but but uh, you grew up in the family. Yes. And, and so what were some of the greatest things you learned from your dad? Well, that's so many things from mom and dad because they were, like I was saying, they were a team. While my father was preaching thoroughly in different nations, even within Argentina, my mom was taking care of the family. And the balance that they have, that was one of the things that I learned, that uh, the ministry both, both work. While my mom was at home with nine kids, he was preaching, sometimes we used to see him. Remember that back in the day, that was 40 days crusade, back to back, from Monday to Monday, for 40 days. The longest one was 62 days crusades, 62 nights. That's really amazing because today, often crusades are two nights, maybe if you go really long, four nights. Yeah. But can you imagine going 40 nights? That gives you a chance to really uh, change people's lives. And, in order, in order, and even more, like, I remember cities were transformed by the move of God after 40, 30, 60 days to say like the whole city will change. Because you, you start the crusade with 20,000 people, but the day 40, you have 100, 150,000 people. And the whole city villages were transformed because it was such a move of God that was increasing every night. So for me, I remember experiencing being a kid running around and seeing the move of God, how the Lord through the Holy Spirit will change like cities. I think it's so amazing that you are serving the Lord and your brothers and sisters are serving the Lord. Like God is a generational God. He's Amen. the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now your, the, your brothers and sisters and you, you're serving the Lord. You still love Jesus, which is so beautiful to see. Yes. Yeah, well, well, for me, it's just like you were saying, it's, we have experienced a coherent gospel at home. So the same mom and dad that were sometimes preaching were the same at home. And you know, for me, that's a legacy that I want to take to my kids. I have two kids and, and, and my wife. So for me, it's just, I learned that, that, that it's beautiful as a family to see a coherent gospel. The same mom and dad that were up preaching to 100,000 people, the same character, the same heart with us as a family, with us as a family. Now, one of the things that your father is known for is deliverance. Yes. I read his book, Listen to Me, Satan. Yes. And he was known for, for saying that, Listen to Me, Satan. Then he would start to, to cast out yes. all the demons. Talk to me about the deliverance ministry. Why is that so important? And, and how did your father do that? Yes, like we have seen people focus on deliverance, but there's so many healing that happen and salvations the same amount in the crusades. So what happened when he got saved, he was 35 years old. He was a prosperous businessman. So he got saved in a crusade from an evangelist from Panama that came on a crusade to uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. So in that crusade, he received the Lord. So what happened after he got saved, he had his business. He will go back to his business and start sharing with people about the Lord, about the transformation of his heart. So he will enter to some places like markets or restaurants and people would begin to manifest. So he didn't know what was going on. He didn't ask for it. Start happening. He started falling in love with the Lord, praying, 
uh, spending time reading the Bible, the pastors, he start going to the church and then read the Gospels, the Gospel of John. He began to fall in love with the Lord. While he was doing these supernatural things were happening when he was walking in the street, where he was, you know, encountering with people. So that was one of the things he didn't look for it. He just came with the package. And that's why he was seeing things that he never saw before. So that's why in his heart, he began to prepare his heart. Okay, how, how can I help the people? When people manifest, people was angry at, for no reason. And that's, I would say, well, that was kind of like the beginning of him looking after the heart of, of God, saying, this is not common, this is not normal. So I have never seen something like that. So that's how he started praying and seeking even more the Lord to help that people that were manifesting for no reason. And so what happens if someone manifests like if, if he's preaching, if he's giving the altar call and yeah. people manifest, uh, I know that you love to train all the yeah. workers who, what, what do they do? So we do like, we do a training that yeah. we, now we call it equipping the church. Mm -hmm. So we teach evangelism, spiritual warfare, intercession, deliverance, and Holy Spirit. So the thing toward that is we do that in the crusade, we teach uh, the whole volunteers. We have like, sometimes we have like 200 people in the deliverance tent pastors, leaders that we train uh, like a, a, in, in, a, in a practical way, you know, how to perform deliverance in a practical way. We don't focus on the demons, on the legions. We focus, okay, the person, we speak with the person, we take control. We, the thing that we do is take authority, the people is manifesting. So within the, after the preaching, you know, like uh, uh, the Great Commission, so they preach the gospel, cast out demons, speak new tongues and heal the sick. So what we do is just the ministry itself is known for these four things. Preaching of the Word of God, casting out the demons, filling the people with the Holy Spirit, and healing the sick. There's nothing new, it's nothing different. It's what the Lord Jesus taught us many years ago. We've been doing that for over 40 years, and it worked. It worked in Argentina, in Japan, Hong Kong, Korea, Taiwan, Indonesia, Europe. It's the same way. We have seen the same transformation, the same touch of God in people's lives. So we believe deliverance is key. After salvation, we understand that the people need to be set free. So that's what we work in a process of, you know, uh, it's not about some, you know, we, we learn throughout the way. Like some people we throw holy water, olive oil, whatever you name it. No, it's not. It's about speaking with the person, taking authority over the manifestation and talking with that person and knowing where's the problem. So it's communication and then the people, you know, once we know the problem, the people will renounce. Okay, I renounce to the hatred, I renounce to what happened in my past, I renounce to what I did, the wrongdoings, and then we take authority, we break the yokes, and then the deliverance process begins. It's beautiful to see uh, Evangelist Daniel when the people comes into the del deliverance tent. Every crusade we have like 400, to 600 or 800 manifested people per night. So when we are praying after the, the, the preaching of the gospel, the first thing he does is salvation calling and after salvation is a prayer for deliverance. So we take 15 to 20 minutes praying for deliverance from the altar. So we have a team that is ready, the people that is manifesting while the deliverance prayer is going on, they are taking to the deliverance tent where carefully we, we, we like to, to take a uh, seriously, the identity of the person. We don't want to expose the demon possessed person. That, that's why you have you take them to a tent. Yes. Because you don't want to expose the no. person. You don't want people to. Sometimes that Satan tries to Make take sure, the attention yes. away from Jesus, and so you take them into the tent. And then once they're in the tent, the pastors, the the leaders are trained yes. to to pray for them, help them to renounce. Yes, that's correct. That's a process. So we have two people helping one. While one is ministering, the other one is praying behind uh, for God to give wisdom, the sermon to the people that is ministering to that person. So we do it in order and we always take care of the people. They are not demons, they are not animals, they are, there's a person in need. So carefully, we love taking it to the deliverance tent. We don't... No make, punching the demons no. out. <laughs> yeah, the demons, you're but gentle, the person, you're yes, gentle. Yes, yes, we are. We take authority yeah. when we have, but we always, when the people manifest, we try to make the person come back to the senses. Yeah. So we don't speak with the demons. We understood that throughout over 40 years. The Lord taught us the way to do it effectively. And then we understand. We don't, we're not going to do a show. We're not going to let 
the enemy do a show, we just take control, we bound it and take it to the liberal stand where the people is going to be treated. We don't like to expose anyone in scenes. And the pulpit on the, it's just taking care of the person and the person to be able to walk in, in the freedom that the Lord has for them. And it's so beautiful when God sets someone free. I mean, they can go from yelling and being very upset, and, and then once they are set free from the demons, have a beautiful smile. Yes. Like there is a true change that comes in people's lives. Yes, and that's, that's one of the beautiful things after salvation that I've seen, even, even over miracles, because when people get so free of depression, anxiety, abuse, so many things from the past, you see them then, what they're coming, the result is a person that is willing, not only happy, not only with the joy of the Holy Spirit, but the person is willing to serve the Lord in, in, in another level. Yeah. So you explained to me that in your father's crusades, there's, there's five pillars. You yes. have salvation. Yes. Deliverance. Yes. What else? Healing. The prayer for healing. Prayer, prayer for healing. Th then we do testimonies. Testimonies. And then we go down and we pray for the people one by one with the local pastor. So we will call the local pastor. He will pray for them before the crusade, the night before. And we get ready to pray for each person. We get down. My father will get down on the field, touching the people. And there's many other miracles happen while we are with the people praying for them by hand. And so often your father would stay for many hours. Three in the morning. Until Start at seven and three in the morning. Sometimes he was. Until everyone is prayed for. Yeah, along with the wow. pastors of the city. Wow. And, and then praying for the Holy Spirit as yes. well? Yes, yes. We do the, like, even in deliverance, like we were mentioning, after the person gets set free, we stand up the person and we start speaking. If they've never been baptized by the Holy Spirit, start, you know, taking the person to, to get to know the Holy Spirit and be baptized yeah. with the Holy Spirit and then move, you know, in the Spirit. Because we want the, the person to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Right now we are here in the nation of Nicaragua. Yes. We've just finished a beautiful crusade with evangelist Nathan Morris. Yes. And God has opened up the nation to the Shake the Nations ministry of, of Nathan Morris. And so uh, you have come down and in, in your role in this crusade was to, to help train yes. the different groups. And so t tell me about the different groups that you organize. You have the ushers. Yes. You have security. Yes. What other groups? We have catchers. Catchers. We have, we have protocol. Protocol. We, we have uh, deliverance, intercession team. We have the prayer team. The prayer team is the one that prays for the sick people. We put the sick people in a section. So there's a prayer team that will take care of them throughout the, the crusade. They will be constantly praying for the sick people. So and that's the groups that we mainly manage. You know to to make. The crusade, like, you know, we have sometimes 30,000 people, sometimes like in Chinandega, we have 67,000 people. So we want to, in a way, have a order. So we do, we, we, throughout the trainings, we're able to help the people and to, you know, otherwise it become a chaos, but we don't want that. So that's where the training, how to manage the masses when Evangelist Nathan is making the call to have order, the, the, the usher, security, everything is in, in order. So that's in the same way the intercession team will pray throughout the night, you know, and the deliverance team will be ready. Some people when yesterday, for instance, the last night while he was preaching, people was manifesting. So we took a few people to the deliverance tent where we love, we carry, we minister to them. So that's, for me, it's so important, you know, the groups that, that we bring order, and also we try to, to help every person that gets there. Yeah, last night when I went out into the crowd and was praying for people, one boy I was praying for began to manifest a demon. And so the ushers grabbed him and they took him over to the tent. And then later I saw that he had been set free. Wow. And so it was so beautiful. And then I saw last night, uh, there was one woman she was holding her crutches up in the air. Like during the prayer for healing, Jesus touched her, she, she was healed. And, and the, the crowd was so thick that she had a hard time getting through. So she just held both her crutches up in the air. And I saw you went out to her, you grabbed her and said, come on, come yes. share your miracle. Yes. And so I took a picture of you with the woman. She's walking yes. and you're holding the crutches because yes. Jesus had healed her. And so, yes, it's beautiful to see that. I mean, I love it. it it's so neat to see God do 
great miracles among the people. Now, you are uh, living in Houston, Texas. Correct. And so God has brought you to the United States, which yes. is good. The United States needs some fuego. Yes. <laughs> we need some anointing from Argentina in the United States. Uh, so, and, and you you have your own ministry yes. as well. Tell me about your ministry and what you do. Yeah, like two years ago, the Lord was like, I actually started almost seven years ago. I was in Mexico and Chiapas in different cities, six different cities um, near Guatemala, and was poor villages and areas, and we ministered with the crusades. And then I came back from that trip with a burden in my heart, and the Lord gave me this word, invasion of hope. So throughout the years, I was praying, Lord, what is invasion of hope? What, what is that? So two years ago, while I was praying, the Holy Spirit showed me uh, um, a word that says, you know, invasion of hope is bringing hope to the hopeless. And the Lord started putting in my heart, how can we uh, bring love in action? So we, the Lord began to give me like a plan of doing social work, medical work, and right the same week, doing the crusade. So we, we began like two years ago, doing we founded the Ministry Invasion of Hope, and then we start working, you know, in Mexico, and, and with this, in these villages that I've been there seven years ago, and we have, we have seen a move of God, just loving on people, without asking for nothing, taking care of needs, uh, the medical work, and then the crusade, and we have like, it was amazing to see the three crusades we have, the stadiums were packed, in these villages, we, see, we saw a move of God, and that's pretty much how we began. You know, we are so excited for what God, God is doing for, you know, not only the, what the our, our goal is the salvation, going from death to eternal life. But in the process, the, the Lord was teaching me, it's not going to be this, but also this. Loving people and taking care of their needs. And then meeting their needs. And then the Lord, we have seen in families and kids how they open their heart. Because it's just love in action. We are not... We are not saying, I'm going to give you this, but you need to receive the Lord. No, no, no. It's just, it's just loving on them. And with that conversation, they open the heart to say, why are you doing this for us? Why are you guys different? Because Jesus is with us. And then we explain to them, and they receive the gospel so quick. And not only that, the next days when we do the crusade, all of them come. So for, for us, it was, like, it was beautiful to see that. And so just recently, you were in Chiapas, yes. Mexico? Yes, yes. Yes, we have two crusades last year, November. We did an uh, um, Ocosingo, and then in, in Chilon, which is like five hours up in the hills, in, in the mountains, but it was beautiful people. They speak uh, um, uh, Solxil and Celtal, other you know, native languages. I mean, it was beautiful to work with them, to see the Lord moving. We have over four or 5,000 people every night. It was four nights, two nights in each city. So wow. the studies were like, you know, they never don't, in, in Chilon, a crusade never happened in the soccer stadium. So it was beautiful to see this, the soccer stadium feel of new people, see God moving. So for me, it's just an, a, a beautiful experience. And you took some evangelists, you partnered with yes. some of the evangelists from the, the Christ for All Nations Evangelism Boot Camp. Yes, yes. Who, who went with you? Uh, um, Caleb Wompler was one of them that came, and Elliot yeah. Martinez. Mm -hmm. So the, the, we, 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 were, we were friends for years, and then we were talking about it. When are we going to do something together? So I felt, when I received this invitation from the pastor from Chi, uh, Chiapas, we want you to come to do another crusade. That was like six years ago. So said, let me pray for let me pray, please. And then after three months, I felt from the Spirit that was the right time. So we went there, and before we went, I called uh, Caleb and Elliot, said, hey, guys, this is the time. Let's do it together. So it was, it was beautiful because we preached in, each night, each one of us. And it was beautiful to see God moving in the gifts of evangelism, the gift that the Lord put in each one of us. So for me, I believe that we are living a time, like here in Nicaragua, a time of, of uh, getting together. It's not about myself, it's about how can, we, how can we do it together and make it you know, better, greater, and bigger. Amen. Well, if someone wants to invite you to come preach at their church yeah. or to come do a crusade or, or if they want to support your ministry, how can they find out more about you? What, what's your website? Yes, the website is uh, www.invasionofhope.com. So in there, they, they invasionofhope.com. Yes, sir. Yes. So they can, they can send invitation. They can know what we're doing. They can pray for us as well as we are continue moving and growing in the Lord. Yeah, I believe God is raising up 
the uh, Hispanics of North America. Yeah. I mean, there's so many people. Just in my city of Tulsa, there are so many people that have come from Nicaragua, from Mexico, from other parts of, yes. of, uh, of Central and South America. And uh, I believe God is raising up the, the Hispanic church in North America because they're, they're on fire. Yes. A and I believe that um, God has brought you to America to help bring revival. Amen, amen. I, I, I'm excited about it. I came like 2008 as an international student. I remember I didn't speak English back then because I went to Italian school in Argentina. So, uh, and it was a whole process of me learning English at 27 years old. But I, made, I, I believe I made it. Like, your, your English is excellent. You do a great job with your English. Well, let's finish by praying for revival. Amen. And why don't you pray in Spanish? Pray, yes. pray for God to, to send revival. Amen. Let, let's pray for Central America, yes. Nicaragua where we are, yes. South America, and let's also pray for North America. Amen. Amen. Let's join us and let's pray. Father God, Padre, te pedimos, Señor, por un mover del Espíritu Santo. We're coming together with Evangelist Daniel, Lord. Padre, te damos gracias por este mover que estamos viendo, Jesús. Padre, yo te pido un mover, Señor, de libertad, un mover de salvación. Padre, un mover del Espíritu Santo, Señor, desde Canadá, Estados Unidos, hasta Argentina, hasta el último país, Señor, de América, del continente, Señor. Padre, yo te pido una ola de mover de Dios. Padre, levanta, Señor, evangelistas. Raise up evangelists, Lord, in any nation, Lord, in every nation, Lord. Yes, Lord. Padre, para que haces un mover del Espíritu Santo, Señor. Para que tú traigas libertad, traigas salvación, traigas sanidad. Señor, traigas un mover del Espíritu Santo, Señor. Gracias porque tú nos traes en unidad. Gracias, Señor, porque podemos ver el mover del Espíritu Santo. Y creemos que viene un gran mover del Espíritu Santo, una ola. Señor del cielo, Señor, sobre la tierra, Señor. Queremos ser parte. We want to be part of the move of God on the earth, Lord. Father, we want to be part of the move of God that you're going to bring throughout the earth, Lord. Padre, ese mover que vas a traer. Creemos, Señor, que tu Espíritu Santo se va a derramar sobre toda lengua, Dios. Sobre toda, Señor, clase de personas, sobre toda cultura. Y creemos y anhelamos, Señor, que tú vas a traer salvación, libertad, y sanidad, Dios. Usa nuestras vidas, Señor, usa nuestras vidas y bendice, Padre, a todos aquellos que están escuchando, están viendo este podcast, Señor, que puedan ser llenos del Espíritu Santo y del fuego de Dios, Padre, para poder proclamar tu palabra, Lord. Father, we pray for those who are watching, that are hearing this podcast, Lord, that they might be filled with the Holy Spirit, Lord, to go out, Lord, and to be witness of Jesus throughout the earth, Lord. Thank you for this time. I bless Evangelist Daniel, the ministry, where, where everything and the great things that you are doing throughout his life, Lord. I bless him and I bless his family. Thank you for this time. Gracias por este tiempo. Gracias por estar con nosotros, Jesús. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Y amen. 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 Well, thank you, Elias, for being on the Evangelism Podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.